Hello, and thank you for waiting, and welcome to this online event from Pearson. Before we get started, I'd like to go over some few housekeeping items so you will know how to participate in today's event. Before we discuss how to download any associated materials and use the platform, I would like to inform you that this session will be recorded for regulatory purposes and for our quality assurance. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenter anytime by typing your questions into the chat box, which is located at the bottom right side of your screen. You may also interact with the presenters on the same chat box. The chat box is for sharing ideas with the whole group, and anything you type into this window can immediately be seen by other delegates in the room. To enter a question or a comment, type into the bottom section of the window and hit enter on your keyboard. You may also use the same chat box for assistance in case you encounter any technical issues in viewing or listening to the webinar content. At this time, everyone is joined on mute, but will have the control to unmute themselves, so please stay on mute if you don't need to speak. To queue for questions, click on raise hand at the menu bar at the bottom. If you don't see this, click on the icon labeled participants and select raise hand. Otherwise, try holding Alt and the letter Y on your keyboard. That's all I need to go through for now. Our presenter for today is Jeffrey Hall, and it's with great pleasure that I hand you over to him now. Thank you. Please go ahead. Good afternoon and welcome to the GCSE Music and A-Level Music uh, support session, uh, looking at um, the update on things moving in, uh, to summer 2022. Um, so the agenda for today is to uh, have a look at the overview of the current situation and how we've got to the, this point. Um, and we'll look through um, the adaptations uh, that are currently in place for uh, component one performing and component two composing, have a brief look at um, the situation for uh, component three, um, and then go through uh, some more detail around advanced information um, and uh, look to how that can be used and what information that you will be getting when that is released. Um, there will be uh, time for questions at the end as well. Um, so um, if you do have any questions as they uh, come up, uh, please do um, make a note of them and try and save those towards the end. And I'll um, try to go through anything at that point. So um, an overview of the current situation is that uh, there was a consultation on uh, adaptations to uh, NEA components. Um, and the outcomes of that uh, were published on the 16th of June, 2021. Um, the outcomes of that confirmed that the arrangements that were in place for summer 2021 submissions would be carried forward to 2022 submissions. Uh, then another consultation followed this, um, and that was on the arrangements for summer 2022, looking uh, more at the exam uh, components of qualifications and that closed on the 1st of August. The outcomes of that were then published on the 30th of September 2021 and that confirmed that exam boards would provide advanced information about the focus of the content of the exams for all GCSEs, AS and A-level subjects um, except for uh, GCSE English Lit, History, Ancient History and Geography um, and that would be for the summer 2022 exams. DFE has conf also confirmed that advanced information would be provided by the 7th of February at the latest. Um, and then on the 9th of December 2021, guidance document um, was published um, giving details around the presentation of advanced information. So, um, in terms of the NEA adaptations um, for component one for GCSE, um, these were um, rolled over from 2021 and they uh, required uh, one or more pieces to be performed. Um, the requirement for ensemble performance um, was removed and the minimum time durations uh, were changed uh, so that if it was a solo performance, um, that would be one minute 30 seconds as a minimum 
and then if it included ensemble performance um, that would be a minimum of two minutes we uh, actually made uh, some changes uh, as well in terms of uh, allowing video recordings to be submitted um, so these could be made in the center as well um, but uh, there was the possibility of uh, using uh, recordings made via video conferencing platforms um, between the teacher assessor and the student um, uh, so if a student was isolating at the time it would allow you to still go ahead uh, potentially with that um, recording of performance um, that would be an unedited recording um, made by the teacher assessor and the student and their instrument would need to remain in view at all times of that recording. The performance uh, would continue to be internally assessed um, using the marking grids published in the specification um, and would be externally moderated. Um, therefore, as it being one performance, uh, that means the component would be marked out of 30 instead of 60 after the scaling for difficulty. Um, we will then use a scaling factor um, to ensure that the weighting of the specification remains the same. Um, and there is a document on the uh, general summer 2022 support page on the Pearson website, which details the scaling factors for the different components. Um, submission uh, for NEA has uh, remained the same as any normal year, and that is the 15th of May, 2022. For A-level music, um, there was a, a similar changes, um, so, but that remained to be a performance of one or more pieces. Um, A-level music doesn't have the requirement for ensemble, but if uh, a student chooses to, they could continue and, and perform as part of an ensemble if they wanted to. Um, the minimum time duration for A-level uh, performance uh, for the Pearson specification uh, was reduced to a minimum of three minutes. And again, there were the options to submit video recordings or the video recording over a video uh, a conferencing platform. Um, where the teacher makes the recording, the unedited recording, uh, with the student remaining and their instrument remaining in view at all times. For A-level music, um, that would continue to be externally assessed using the marking grids published in the specification, and the performance uh, would continue to be marked out of 60 after scaling uh, for the difficulty. And again, submission would be by the 15th of May. For component two, um, for GCSE music, um, that was uh, reduced to requiring a composition of one piece. Um, so we took the decision not to release um, the briefs uh, in September 2021. Um, so the composition would be a single free composition. The minimum time for composition uh, was reduced to uh, two minutes. And then it would continue to be internally assessed using the marking grids published in the specification and then externally moderated. Again, that component would be marked out of 30 um, because of the reduction uh, to being one piece rather than two. Um, and again, the scaling factor would be used to make sure that the weighting of the specification remains the same. Again, the submission for that would be the 15th of May 2022. For A-level music, uh, there were a few more changes uh, to this component. Um, again, it was reduced to uh, one piece. And again, we took the decision to make that a free composition. That meant that we didn't release uh, any of the set briefs uh, in September um, 2021. And it did also mean that there would be no requirement to complete and submit a brief assessing technique um, where the briefs for those would usually be, re be released to candidates from the 1st of April. So we wouldn't be releasing those briefs as well. 
So the minimum time for composition uh, for A level was reduced to three minutes. And again, the component would continue to be externally assessed using the marking grids published in the specification for the free composition. And therefore, that would be marked out of 40. Um, we would then use, again, a scaling factor um, for that component to make sure that the weighting of the specification remains the same. And that would need to be submitted by the 15th of May, 2022. For component three, uh, for GCSE and A-level music, um, the exams are intended to go ahead in summer 2022. Um, and as previously mentioned, DFN at Ofqual published a joint consultation outcomes on the 30th September, um, outlining uh, the detail around advanced information um, that would be released um, for um, all GCSE, AS and A-level subjects, except for those uh, listed there. And that the advanced information will be provided by the 7th of February at the latest. So now we're moving into uh, detail around advanced information, what that is and how it can be used. So advanced information uh, is intended to communicate in advance some of the aspects of the specification that will be assessed in the exam papers. Um, information will detail the focus of particular aspects of the exam, and that could include things like the content, context, text, topics, subtopics, themes, and skills um, that would be assessed in the exams in summer 2022. It's intended to support revision in time before the exam. Uh, and the advanced information doesn't require any changes to a question paper's usual structure. Um, so that means that it will continue to be familiar to teachers and students. Um, and it would allow you to continue to use uh, the teaching resources currently available. Um, so that includes uh, things like past papers. Um, and it uh, would support student confidence in minimizing uh, the unexpected in the layout and structure of uh, questions in the paper as well. The thing with uh, advanced information is that it is tailored to be individual to the specification and the uh, subject. So therefore, different qualifications require different advanced information solutions um, to ensure the maximum value of the approach. That means that although there are uh, common approaches across specifications and subjects, uh, that within each subject at a particular level, um, and between uh, exam boards, things will look different because it is tailored uh, to that specific um, specification. Uh, the advanced information will not always be able to detail everything that is in the exam as well. So the key principles around advanced information is that we've avoided providing so much detail that answers are likely to uh, to likely questions could be prepared or memorized. Um, and we've made sure that advanced information doesn't undermine the value of the qualifications supporting student progression, uh, doesn't provide direct uh, answers to other potentially low tariff questions, or compromise the capability of the examinations to sufficiently differentiate between student performance. So how can advanced information be used? Um, so it can be used from the point of release, um, which is looking more likely like the 7th of February. Um, it can be used flexibly by centres to achieve its purpose of supporting revision. Um, but it shouldn't be used to narrow teaching and learning. So you should still deliver the full content of the specification um, but it, the intention is that it's used to help support the revision as we move towards the exams in the summer. It can't be brought into the examination room, um, but and it will not be at a level that allows questions to be predicted or answers prepared. Um, presentation 
will take the most appropriate form uh, for clear communication of the information as well. So you can use advanced information to develop revision materials. Um, that could include focus mock papers. So using the advanced information to just focus on the uh, topics that are detailed in there. Um, you can use advanced information to support extended response questions um, and to use past paper exemplars to support uh, the advanced information topics. Um, on the slides here, there are links through to uh, past papers and mark schemes and examiner reports. Um, and there's also links through to the further exemplar material for the specifications as well. So looking at the, the summary detail that came out in December um, for GCSE Music, um, the advanced information will apply to component three appraising only. Um, for section A, it will list the set works which will be assessed. You will get the detail of the clef used for the musical dictation question, and you'll get the specifications error of study for the unfamiliar piece. For section B, it will include detail of the set work uh, which will be assessed and the specifications error of study. In terms of the presentation of the area of study, it will uh, give the, um, the set works, uh, will be presented in the specification order rather than the question paper order. Um, so therefore the works detailed in uh, section A will be in the order that they appear listed in the specification rather than the questions that they would relate to. Um, and there is a link through on this slide um, through to the advanced information summary document that is available online. For A-level music, uh, it is quite similar um, that it will only apply to component three appraising only. Um, there's a, a little bit of uh, mistake on the information. This was copied directly from the document that's available online. But uh, for section A, um, it will list the set works which will be assessed. Um, and it says here the specifications area of study for the unfamiliar piece, although that question, which is question five, um, falls into section B. Um, so as well for section B, um, the advanced information will list the set works which will be assessed. Um, so that means for the question six, you'll get the detail around the set works uh, that those optional questions are on for question six. And again, the set works will be presented in the specification order rather than the question order of the paper. And again, there's a link through uh, there to the um, full document uh, giving the guidance on the advanced information for A-level. I've also included uh, some useful links to um, other information. So that was the, there's a couple of links there through to the uh, advanced information guidance. There's links through to assessment guidance for summer 2022 and FAQs as well. Um, there's also uh, links through to the summary assessment arrangements for summer 2022. There's a link through to the general support pages for summer 2022. Um, which is where you'll find the details around the um, scaling factors for the different components. I would encourage people to sign up to receive the general qualifications bulletins that come out. Um, they're usually um, fortnightly um, and give the latest detail um, on the general qualifications as we move towards the assessments uh, in the summer. And there's also a link through to the JCQ guidance um, for teachers on uh, the use of advanced information as well. Um, at this point, I can open it up to questions. Um, if you want me to clarify anything, I'm happy to go through that and answer any anything that you would like. So uh, you can uh, put those questions in the chat or the question and answer. Uh, box. I'm um, happy to go through that. Um, 
so there was a question that's come in uh, for A level, will the information differentiate between question five and question six? So for question five, um, you will get the area of study um, uh, that uh, that unfamiliar piece is, is linked to. Um, and then you will also get the set works listed that will be in question five. Um, so you sh that should differentiate and, and be clear um, which uh, links to what there. Um, there was a question of how is the advanced information sent to centres? Um, is it delivered to centres exams officer or is it emailed out in the exams officer general qualifications bulletins update? Um, so once it is available, there will certainly be something in the uh, general qualifications bulletins. Um, I will also make sure that a newsletter goes out uh, detailing that there will be documents uh, available on the website under each specification um, as well, um, showing you the advanced information there. Um, and potentially uh, as well, I will do another session um, once that is released as well. Uh, so someone has asked, when will this information be distributed, please? 7th February is the latest. So, yeah, at this point, it's still, uh, the detail is 7th February by the latest, but it's looking ever more increasingly that it will be um, the 7th of February. Um, just going through. Uh, someone has asked if we're submitting coursework online. Um, so the intention is to move uh, everything to online submission. Um, and uh, I don't know if anyone submitted uh, material for the quality assurance process back in summer um, 2021 uh, for the, the tags there. Um, but the, the process is going to be very similar to that uh, process there where you will get the list of uh, your students and you can drag and drop files and upload things and then submit that um, as you go through um, the material and, and uploading that. Um, I have a student uh, who has performed a piece which is 1 minute 35, but it has 12 part intro which should be marked down as her playing time is not 1 minute 30. So in terms of that um, generally short interludes and introductions uh, would count towards the time. Um, 12 bars is probably uh, okay and a, an examiner uh, or a, um, a moderator would be uh, fine with that and mark the whole piece as that timing. Um, so, uh, Ellie, um, you may be able to answer that one about the PowerPoint uh, being sent out to attendees. Um, if not, could you help with the location of information on the scaling factor? Uh, so, yeah, um, so, I can probably paste that into the chat in, in a bit. I'll get through a few more questions and then uh, post the link uh, to that in a second. Um, I will go through a couple of uh, the questions that are in the Q&A box as well now as well. Um, so just to clarify, the ensemble performance is not a requirement anymore for GCSE as long as the solo performance is one minute uh, one and a half minutes. So for this academic year, um, there isn't the requirement for ensemble performance. Um, so that was removed as part of the adaptations for NEA for this academic year. Um, the expectation is that for summer 2023, um, we would move back to normal specification requirements. So that ensemble performance would come back, but obviously, uh, the decisions um, on that 
haven't been announced yet so that um but i would be assuming that um uh, we would be moving back to uh, uh, the normal specification requirements and uh, that's the intention as well there. Um, but for this year, if it's solo performance and it's one and a half minutes, then that meets the requirements. Um, so we are just finalizing some of the guidance around submitting uh, NEA online. Um, there are some useful uh, videos uh, that are being produced that show you how to do that process. Um, so again, as soon as all that is available and confirmed, I can um, uh, put all that in my next update, uh, which will probably come out at the beginning of February, really, probably just after the uh, 7th of February. And then so in terms of uh, the advanced information, uh, as it says, um, it will detail the set work. Um, so Therefore, um, that is as it's detailed in the specification, so it wouldn't go down into specific movements, uh, for example. Um, so hopefully that clarifies that for you. Uh, let's move back to the chat to go through things. Um, so just having a look. Uh, just to clarify, the ensemble performance is not a requirement anymore. Yes, yeah, so I think I answered that one uh, through the Q&A as well. Um, how can we receive the recording of the meeting? So, um, so, now, uh, notice. so PowerPoint will be sent out after the presentation um, and there will be a recording made available too. Um, are notated scores essential for compositions uh, created using Q, they say. I was hoping screenshots with the write up support. Yeah, so we've always accepted um, score in, in terms of a broad sense for compositions. Um, so that could include a notated score. It could include um, uh, annotated screenshots it could be a written account detailing things or it could be a combination of, of all of those really um just to really uh, allow students the the best way of presenting their intentions and, and the composition that they have done um also would you repeat your answer regarding submitting coursework online a student came into my room did you say it will be similar submission to last year um so yet the online submission process uh, that uh, is coming in for uh, summer 2022 um, is uh, going to be the same system essentially as the, the quality assurance process as last summer um, where you could log in, you would get your list of, of students and you are able to drag and drop um, material up uh, against their name and submit the material that way. Um, so what is the significance of the questions being presented in specification order? So um, the questions wouldn't be in specification order um, on the paper. It is just how the advanced information is presented that would be in specification order. Um, so rather than detailing the set works as they would appear on the paper when it's sat in the summer um, it will just be this the set works as they appear listed in the specification um, is there a document anywhere linked to a document uh, which explains the upload process files and formats required and dates when this should be done uh, yeah, all of that support material around um, 
the upload process is being produced. Um, I have regular meetings about it, but we've made sure that um, file formats uh, work um, and accept a, quite a wide range of file formats as well. Um, and, and we've taken that into account in terms of the file sizes and things like that as well. Um, but yes, I'll, in my next update, um, which will be out in February, um, I'll contain links to as much of that as possible um, as well. <laughs> my team are new to the online NEA submission process. Is there guidance on how to go about this? Um, so yeah, um, there, as just said as well, there will be guidance on that. Um, it can be reached through uh, logging in through edX and online as well. There should be a link uh, one of the options on the left hand side of the screen when you log in um, will take you through to that uh, submission portal. So if you are using video recordings um, to submit, they uh, would be uploaded as well. Um, so recording of performances, compositions would be uploaded as well as the forms. Uh, so pre-COVID, the NEA process involved pupils being told their marks for a period of time available for appeal. Um, so yeah, so that is a a a, a thing uh, where yes, inter internally assessed NEA where it's moderated, um, students uh, are should be told their mark and time allowed for them to appeal that. Um, and, and have that reviewed if necessary. So yes. Um, this may be more general, but I have a student uh, composition uh, submitting a score. They're also eager to write a commentary. I've told them that they don't need to, but would they be penalized if they do submit both? Certainly wouldn't be penalized. Um, and uh, sometimes it is useful uh, to point that out to an examiner moderator um, important things in the composition or score that a student wants to highlight doesn't have to be a full written account it could be um, a uh, annotations on the score as well um, so there's various different ways that that could be approached uh, Will examination officers be concentrated about registering for the online recording for listening exam? Um, so the uh, audio for the uh, listening exam um, is available as a digital download and exams officers can access that uh, 24 hours before uh, the exam um, if they're registered for that process. Most exams officers are because um, MFL operate a similar system for um, speaking and listening exams and, and things like that as well. Um, so that uh, is the detail to sign up to that is included in the admin support guide, uh, which is available online, which uh, exams officers uh, usually access as well. Um, but again, uh, in my next update, I'll make sure that, that links are included to that. Um, to make sure everyone's got the details um, for that process. But if uh, requested, um, we can still send CDs as well. Uh, you mentioned annotated screenshots, part composition submission. Uh, do you mean as part of the commentary or is it a separate form of score? Uh, to clarify, if a student wanted to use annotations over prose, annotations instead of a 500 word commentary, is that right? So, um, so the screenshots uh, that are annotated could be the score um, for a composition. Um, so that would be fine just to submit the, those screenshots with annotations. Um, always my advice on that is to make sure the screenshots are as large as possible and in color. Um, useful to include a full overview um, of um, the, the, the structure 
um, and then include more detailed parts uh, as well as they want to highlight things. Um, and A level section B essay, uh, the three choices of essay will be listed. Have I got this correct? Um, so last year, we announced the changes to A level music um, where um, there was the reduction in set works to uh, 13 set works. Um, the exam time has been extended by 10 minutes, so it's now two hours and 10 minutes. And also there is the fourth optional question for question six as well. Um, but the set works for all four options will be detailed in the advanced information. Uh, apologies for banging on about composition commentaries. Uh, would door, piano roll, print screens be acceptable as part of annotations or would it have to be a score? Yep. So piano roll things, absolutely fine. Um, to include those um, if that is the best way to present that information uh, as well. Um, is there any guidance on how to mark pupils who use Apple loops as part of their compositions? Right, in terms of using any loops in, in compositions, um, it's about thinking of what the student has actually done and used that loop and if they've manipulated it and changed it or are they just using it in their in its raw form as they've imported it um, if they've just imported it and, and used it then they aren't composing that part and that shouldn't be considered um, as part of their composition process if they are then manipulating it and, and changing it to be essentially a new piece of music or and using it in a, a very different way, um, then, uh, then you would be considering that as part of their composition. Um, okay, I did say I would try and share a couple of things by link. Um, if you just bear with me a second, um, I just need to move a few things around and find the link that I'll post up. Um, so I said I would give a link through to the scaling factors. Um, so That is on this page here, if I just pop this in the chat. Um, so if you scroll down on that page, uh, there is um, a heading which says Summer 22 uh, Exam Series Weightings. Um, and there is a document under there uh, that details that. Then also, if I post this link, which uh, takes you through to the learner work transfer, um, some of the support pages around that, which details the file formats um, that, that can be used. Um, okay, and might be a silly question, but are there any specific dual piano roles that are acceptable? Will any of them be fine? Um, essentially, I would say any of them are fine. I don't think, I mean, they all look fairly similar um, and contain the same sorts of information. I don't think there's any that wouldn't be accepted um, as long as the information is clearly presented as well there. Um, okay. I think from looking at things, um, 
we have probably answered all the questions that have come in. Um, I'll just give people a minute or so um, to type any further questions if they have anything more. Um, but uh, just while we're doing that on this next slide um, is just uh, contact information. So um, there's a link through to the uh, customer support portal where you can submit any queries. Um, there's uh, the email address, uh, which is teachingmusic at pearson.com. Uh, there's the phone number. There's a link through to the uh, Pearson Music Community page, which um, I post things up on there, like links to some of the support sessions that I've run in the past um, and useful documents and links. It's also a place where you can ask questions um, and, and have things answered. And there's a link through to uh, my Twitter as well. Um, so just having a quick look, um, I've just realized I posted the links um, and I didn't do it to absolutely everyone. Um, so let's try that again. So there are the two links uh, that I just mentioned. Um, so uh, are there XLS versions of the CAS and PASS for GCSE available? Um, so uh, we were making them available. There were a few problems with them, so they haven't been made available um, online um, for, for this year. There are the PDF and the Word versions, I believe, up there as well um, that can be used. Um, uh, so mentioned about the scaling factor, what is this in reference to? Probably I was late and missed this. Uh, so because of some components uh, are marked out of fewer marks than they would normally be in, an, in a normal assessment year. Um, it's necessary to use a scaling factor to ensure the weighting of the specification remains the same. Um, and therefore, uh, for GCSE performing, for example, that is for this academic year marked out of 30, but would normally be marked out of 60. Therefore, we need to use a scaling factor um, to make sure the weighting of the specification remains the same. So the mark out 30 would use a scaling factor of, of two um, to make sure that that is uh, correct. So hopefully uh, that's answered everything. So if the past CAS forms are not available online, how do we submit them? Is it separate submitting audio files. Uh, no, so there are pass and cast forms available online and you would uh, submit them online uh, through the digital upload uh, process with the audio files as well. Um, so they are available. So the forms are available online now and, and you can use the, there was going to be Excel versions that could be used, uh, but they haven't been done because um, there are a few problems with them. Uh, so please use the, I think there's the Word and the PDF version um, that's available to use. Um, and when it comes to submission uh, through the online, uh, the learner work transfer portal, uh, you would upload the uh, PASS or CAS form, depending on which component it is, and the learner work. So the, uh, the performance or composition, as well as the score with that as well. So it would be necessary to have a digital version of the form to upload with the signatures, yes. Hopefully that has answered everything. Um, 
if you do have any questions uh, that come up after the session, um, please feel free to email or uh, use the contact portal. Um, and I'm happy to answer anything that way as well. So if students are submitting one side of performance instead of an ensemble performance as well, will the marking scheme point system be adjusted accordingly? So because the same marking grids are used for solo and ensemble in the specification, um, you would still use the same marking grids um, for the solo performance. Um, so there's no need to adjust what you're how you use the marking grids in the specification and you would apply that to performance you just would be marking one performance rather than two and that's and then we would be applying the uh, scaling factor to the marks okay um Hopefully that's answered everything. Um, as I said, if you do have anything further um, after the session, please uh, drop me an email. Um, I hope you found the session useful um, and I wish you all the best as we move towards assessments in the summer. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our session for today. We hope you found it useful. Have a great day and stay safe.